Episode 22, 31st of August, 1998. Suddenly, it's the end of August. There is still so much to do and very little time to do it. Admittedly, the hard landscaping is almost finished with the edges of the lawn now defined with slate, but all the planting is still to come. The studio is finished and it's better than I had imagined. I deliberated over roof angles and wall heights until the builder was shaking his head in disbelief and then panicked when it began to look more like a tower than anything else. But I'm very pleased with the end result. It just needs some planting around it to tie its feet to the ground. I've been plodding along, though not writing much. This probably reflects the slower pace of one's garden thoughts in winter, the lack of stimulation from plants and the type of work winter usually brings, being a little more than labouring to achieve that which you planned last summer and autumn. I hope that one day this will be a wonderful winter garden, but the sort of plant structure required to make it wonderful year round can't be achieved quickly. For this needs to be created of woody plants which last the winter through, and these are relatively slow growing compared with the herbaceous plants. A new garden of perennials can look semi-mature in summer, then revert to apparent infancy for the winter. My garden looks entirely dead or entirely non-existent. There isn't a blade of grass to be seen, hardly a trace of green. The grey of the corrugated iron studio links with the grey of the slate, reflecting the grey of the house, all held together to its detriment by the grey of the ever-present bare soil. Fairly bleak. The other day, with the sun shining and its warmth on my back, I had serious doubts that any of it was ever going to grow again. Why this should have happened on such a beautiful day, I don't know. But my mother, who happened to call at the time, reminded me of the remarkable growth of the gravel garden last year, restoring my confidence. The superb late winter weather has at least allowed me to spray off the front lawn in preparation for digging and planting. I always intended to do a James Van Sweden-esque meadow type planting based largely on ornamental grasses. Then last Friday morning, I interviewed James Van Sweden himself on my regular garden radio show and have instantly become a disciple, re-examining every photo of his book, Bold Romantic Gardens in intimate detail and devouring its text at every possible opportunity during the day and while bouncing or patting a baby in the middle of the night. My only problem is that to achieve this effect quickly, I need to get hold of big clumps of grasses and they're mostly sold small and take a few years to make a real impact. So as the winter is drawing to an end, uh, the pace is really starting to, well, really needs to pick up. Uh, at that stage, I know that I was really busy with my work and I'd committed myself to this crazy date of, of this garden opening uh, we just had our second child earlier that year, so our hand, hands were really full. So tune in tomorrow to see how well I'm handling the pressure.